uh, all of these manifestations are all of the different energies of the Lord, and a particular incarnation facilitates these particular uh, activities of the Lord in different categories. But we have to understand that they're all equally powerful. Can you hear me? Yes, March. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of things popping up on the screen. And, you know. I apologize, Marge. I was trying to see if I could live stream, and I had issues, and now it finally worked after 10 minutes, so I wanted to shoot your video onto YouTube. I, I apologize, Marge. Uh, no need to apologize. Um, so we can understand that, that although Vishnu is is the manifestation of Krishna. Sometimes the materialists, when they delve into these spiritual topics, they get everything wrong. Most of the time they're wrong. In fact, not most of the time, they're always wrong. And one of the errors that they make is they say that Krishna is either the ninth or the 14th incarnation of Vishnu. They put Vishnu as the supreme and Krishna as a uh, manifestation. That's because they can't understand Krishna, nor do they have the qualifications to understand Krishna. Because Krishna appears in his own uh, initial transcendental form as Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And he has two arms. So they see the forearm Vishnu or the forearm Narayan as being superior to the two arm Krishna. And because Krishna acts more like an ordinary person or the Vishnu manifestations do the work of uh, maintenance of the material energy and perform some of the activities of creation also in the higher realms. And so therefore they cannot uh, connect Krishna as being the supreme. And of course, because they have a poor fund of knowledge and they use, they use this speculation. I was listening to Shiva Prabhupada today, and he was really I mean, blasting I mean, with both barrels to the this particular uh, lecture. I was listening all the, the scientists and the religionists and the academics who think they have an understanding of whatever their background or the occupation is. But Prabhupada basically says they're all stupid. And that's the word he kept using over and over again. They're stupid. Because, first of all, they have no right to go into the area of spirituality because they don't have the qualifications to go into it. Just like if you, uh, if you want to go to school, you can't just start with the higher grades. You just can't sit into the more advanced studies and think, well, you know, this is where I want to really be because you have no qualification to understand the principles that set the foundation for your understanding of the higher studies. You have to start from the beginning and then work your way up. But they just want to jump into areas that is none of their business. And then they make their, their, uh, speculations and then the conclusions. And as Paula said, they're stupid. They're always wrong because um, they have no adhikari. And so that is fashionable in today's that people speak about spirituality as if they have some understanding. But only those who are practicing devotional service can have this proper understanding. It's a closed program. One who is not engaged in devotional service cannot understand Krishna, nor can they understand the devotees who are executing devotional service. Nor can they even understand the basic principles of it. So um, this is very fashionable. And you see here now, um, Sukadeva Goswami is in a very, it's in, he's in a discussion because there was a conjectural argument that 
that appears earlier in the series of verses. How could Sukadeva Goswami make that statement that Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead based on the verses mentioned in the Bhagavad? But he, because he is self-realized, he understands the position of Krishna in relationship to all of the other manifestations of the Godhead. And of course, scripture is also there. Uh, Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vikraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karma Karma. This verse that's stated from the first verse of the three issue Panishads, I'm sorry, nothing, I'm sorry, from the Brahma Samhita, it is the foundation for all understandings of Krishna. Um, also, there are many other verses that establish Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Arjun, in uh, the Bhagavad Gita, says, Param Dharma, Param, Param Brahma, Param Dharma, Pavitram Idam Uttamam, Nadyaksatav Dhamam Dharma, Susuttam Karma Agyam. He says that you are the Supreme Brahman, you are the original source, you are the personality of God. Uh, you are original, inexhaustible. Uh, so we hear, and then in order to confirm that, he also uh, illustrates that Anarda, Asita, Devala, and Vyas are saying the same thing. Therefore, there is no doubt of your position as the original person on the uh, So it's important to understand this because you'll find that um, it's very difficult to understand Krishna because Krishna appears to be an ordinary person when he performs his leelas, either in the spiritual world or in the material world. And therefore, they relegate him to a lesser position or they even consider him to be fictitious or mythological. Um, but here it's clear. And one of the offenses that we recite daily in the list of 10 offenses to the holy name is to consider Lord Brahman or Lord Shiva to be equal to or independent of the Supreme Lord Vishnu, who is a manifestation of Krishna. So Shiva and Brahma are devas. And although they are worshipped, especially Lord Shiva, throughout the uh, Vedic scheme for worship, there are a lot of Shiva, Shiva bhaktas, not too many Brahman bhaktas, because Brahma is not worshipped practically nowhere in India or anywhere. The only place he's worshipped is one place called Pushkar. Somewhere in, well, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's in northern India. Uh, yeah, so people are very much uh, inclined to worship the demigods and place the demigods on the same level as the Supreme Lord. Yata Pata, Tata Pata, I'm okay, you're okay. All, of, all the worship of deities are on the same level. And sometimes it becomes a farce where people place ordinary living beings who either are family members or someone who is an exalted personality or materialists, they also put them on the same level as the Supreme Person. But in order to understand the process of bhakti and the goal of bhakti, it has to understand the relationship between Krishna and all of the other manifestations. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 18, chapter 65, the divine grace, we see Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, has illustrated that uh, the devotees in this ISKCON movement, a worshiper of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Although we can honor, respect, and also 
to some degree worship the other incarnations of the Lord, Krishna is the focus of our devotional practice. Why? Because we are followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Krishna himself, and also taught devotion to Krishna in the form of this process of Harinam Sankirtan, which is the Yuga Dharma in this age. So in order to uh, clarify the principle of proper devotion, uh, it's under, we have to understand the relationship between Krishna and all of the other manifestations of Radha nature. Now there are Ram Bhaktas, there are, there are the Shringa Bhaktas, there are Ram Bhaktas, um, there are Vishnu Bhaktas, there are Ayan Bhaktas, all of these persons, they worship that same personality of Godhead in different forms. So that is also devotional service. But those who follow Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and adhere to his are devotees of Krishna. And that is mentioned in one verse that everything centers around Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the glorification of Krishna in Sri Vrindavan as the conclusion of Bhagavatam and illustrating the highest form of worship, the highest form of spiritual attainment. So these verses are very important to help establish um, Krishna uh, distinct from all of the other manifestations of demigods and other forms of the personality of God. And therefore, our worship goes to Krishna. Although he manifests himself in different forms for, for the purpose of both worship and for the purpose of function. The Russian chapter that I assume the case for Baba Dijan, Balakshi, and Dao. All his other manifestations of incarnation are uh, getting their, their source of power because they are non different than Krishna, but yet at the same time different for the sake of function. Okay, so I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Mahmoud, for such a nice class, and, and thank you for sharing the different points in this verse. I, I would like to ask the voice if any questions, any clarification, any thoughts, please uh, raise your hand so that we can um, call upon you, you know, in order and not miss anybody. Maharaj, I'm assuming that you have up until uh, a, another 15 more minutes, Maharaj, or so? Yeah, uh, it's, it's about... Uh... It's on the half hour mark now. Oh, oh, cool. Okay. Maj, I have a question while others are thinking. As you were uh, mentioning, um, you know, there are wrong. Stop the share. Please. Okay. Sure, Marge. Yeah. Okay. okay. Marge is uh, when when you were sharing about there are Ram Bhaktas and there are um, you know, Nashinga Bhaktas, there are Vishnu Bhaktas. So as practicing devotees of Krishna conscious of, of ISKCON. Is is our duty or our mood should be to appreciate the other bhaktas, or should we be trying to pull them, quote unquote, towards being a Krishna bhakta? No, we should appreciate that. Lord Chaitanya, he he tested uh, Marari Gupta, who is a Ram bhakta, just to show his devotion to Ram. He he was teasing him that. Actually, Ram is very nice, but Krishna's pastimes are even nicer. So you should actually worship Krishna. And he did that just to glorify Marari Gupta's love for Lord Ramachandra. And Marari Gupta took very seriously what Lord Chaitanya had encouraged him to do, but he couldn't give up his devotion to Ram. And so he was quite distressed. And the next day, after struggling all night with the idea of giving up Ram, he came and he, you know, he admitted that, you know, I can't give up my rival puppy. And he was in quite an emotional state. The Lord was very pleased just to see his devotion to Ram. And he took a pen, piece of Gopi Chandan and he wrote on his head, Ram Das. <laughs> 
So the Lord wanted to show, you know, his that. And the original commentator for Srimad Bhagavatam, which is Srihar Swami, is a devotee of the Sringadevi. That's the Sringadevi. Although he is the commentator where all other commentators get their understanding. So, and he's in the Sringabhakta, and that's clear. You'll find that if you read the, uh, I think it's the 87th chapter of the 10th canto, prayers by the personified Vedas. As the verses go on, which is just a series of prayers to Lord Krishna, at the end, he makes statements on each of the verse practically in glorification of Lord Nishimura. <laughs> so, and of course, that, that's also been been collaborated by great souls. And he is a uh, Nishimura Bhakta. Mm -hmm. And there are Ram Bhaktas, Nishimura Bhakta. Uh, there are Bhaktas of, uh, you know, when you say Ram and Nishringa, that's Narayan. So then Narayan Bhakti Bhakti. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. And then, and then there are devotees who are exclusively devoted to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they will be called Goranga Bhaktas, Maharaj? Uh, I'm just guessing. I guess that would be applied after the Bodhananda So Bodhananda Saraswati. He doesn't want to know about any other incarnation except the Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. He's quite adamant about that and he speaks in a very strong, uses strong words, rejecting any other form of worship. <laughs> <laughs> that that name just popped in my head. I said, oh, probably it's going to go this. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's. Thank you, Maharaj. Any questions from devotees? Any clarification? Uh, and if you could please turn your video on, I'm just making this request um, on behalf of Chandramai Swami, who's made that request many times. So I would like to ask devotees if you could please turn your video on. That would be really nice. There is a question in the... Okay, Sri Devi is going to write a question because she said that she has poor internet connection in India. So she's going to type a question. Any questions from devotees? Any um, while we're waiting for this question to come through chat? Uh, let me see here. Maj, I have another question, and that is um, we, we know that there is misconception lack of a better word i think that krishna is the 14th or 15th you know um 20 sorry avatar but if we look at the goloka chart maharaj you know like i think it's very common now which is really really nice that krishna is way on the top the supreme personality of godhead yet i come across situations where they still can accept it like even though they see the goloka chart they still can accept it. Why is that so, Maharaj? <laughs> Prabhupada would say dog obstinacy. <laughs> you chase a dog away and he still comes back. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> This stubbornness becomes obvious, and the scriptures illustrate over and over again the position of Krishna as in superior to all of the manifestations of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. And this verse that we're discussing, that is Sam Sam Kalam Tum Sam Krishna's two brother one Swayam, is what is called the, the verse that establishes the principles of. What is the actual goal of the Srimad Bhagavatam? And that is to worship Sri Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. Maharaj, you want me to pull up the verse, Maharaj? Is uh, well, 1328. Yeah. 1328? Okay. Yeah. Let me do that. Well, apart, 
first it's called Haribasa Sutra, which oh. is that verse that establishes the meaning of the particular text that's found in it. So each text, each spiritual text, has the Paribhasa Sutra. Canto 1, chapter 3, verse 28. Okay. I'm going to share that now, Maharaj. Yeah, it's quite... It's, is this is my is this in marriage? Well, this no, that's that's a big that's three twenty six. Twenty six, okay. Twenty eight is the one you want. Oops, I went too fast. You're going backwards. You're going backwards. Yeah, I don't know why this thing went back. I'm going to do twenty six. Some it just skipped on me. This is talked. Yeah, this is twenty six. <laughs> So we want 28. Okay. I... Okay, yeah. All of the above incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Lord. Oh, the Lord, Sri Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of God. And all of them appear on planets whenever there's a disturbance or is created by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the field. So here, Prabhupada says, first line, Sri Krishna, the personality, is distinguished from other incarnations. So he's not an incarnation. He's the source of the incarnation. Just like that verse that we read today, one candle lights all of the other candles. All of the other candles come from the original thing and have the same general power. From the same way, all of the manifestations of the Godhead are equally powerful as the original one, but they just don't exhibit that power. So there's no need to in the particular role that they play. The Krishna exhibits that power. But when you read Nekko's devotion, you also find that there are four characteristics the qualities that are exclusive to Sri Krishna, which no other, another ugly manifestation that God has had. His beautiful bodily features, surrounded by his devotees, his transcendental pastimes, and then one more mentioned that we believe. Marj, there's a very nice question here by Mother Sri Devi. She's asking, would Christians, Muslims, Jews, etc., also be considered devotees? Yeah. Yeah, but on a lesser level. Uh, a lesser level means that devotion is there in the hearts of all living entities and one can have pure devotion from the Lord in any in any particular authorized path that is given but the quality of the Vedic tradition or you might say the Vaishnava tradition which is more exclusive is that the knowledge that centers around the personality of Godhead and the knowledge that centers around the activities of devotion and service are much more voluminous and in detail. But you can have a pure devotee who is, who is a Christian or someone who is Islam if they're simply engaged in serving the Lord with love. Too. I hope that helped, Sri Devi. I'm trying to see her respond. She's not getting good connection where she's at. So I know that helped me. Thank you, Marsh, for clarity. She says, yes, thank you. Thank you, Sri Devi, for asking that question. Any other questions from devotees? Any thoughts? I'm, I'm trying to be mindful of Marge's time because I know that he has to leave, but still I don't want to. Miss any devotees? If you have any questions, so please. Um, if you have, you have about four more minutes. 
uh, if you have any questions, any comments, any clarification, any thoughts that's lingering in our heads, <laughs> please do ask. Marge, it seems that there's no question. Would you like to end your class so that you could go to your next appointment, Marge, or would you like to chat around? Well, uh, yeah, I think I'd have to stop because time is really short, but that's I'll fine. Say if there's questions, but I don't want to add anything that we not part of this program right now. Um, doesn't yeah. Yes, it I, doesn't I, appear I, I, that there's a question, Maharaj. Okay. Wait, there's something from Sri Devi. Uh, what'd she say? In interfaith programs. Okay, I think she's typing something. I think she's still typing. She's just type, she just has okay. She says in interfaith programs, what should our attitude be towards them? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question, Marge, because I think that's, yeah, that, that's something that I would ask too. Thank you, Shudev, for asking that question. Well, if you the Prabhupada, it's one way. If you're not sure the Prabhupada, it's another way. <laughs> so, I would suggest that you humbly and respectfully present your teachings and so everyone can understand without mm, presenting it in a challenging or a critical mood. You know, we just can, we can speak according to Shastra. But in these, these interfaith, Situations which I've done a lot of interfaith back in the 1990s. I did much. Um, in fact, we even had interfaith conferences. I was directly involved in organizing. Uh, I find that, you know, what goes on is that people like to present their particular doctrine not so much about the personality of Godhead. They don't, that's what I found. People don't speak so much about God. They speak about the principles of the religion that they follow. And uh, it's more like a lesser form of presentation. One of the things they liked about us in our interfaith, we did interfaith groups programs with sometimes up to 30, 35 different other religious sects because we were connected with the World Parliament of Religions, which is was situated in Chicago, still is, which is a world body that correlates and also presents different interfaith programs around the world. So I was actively involved in that. But um, yeah, we have that. We have also have it on film also. One of our devotees, Radha Sundari, she presented a nice presentation describing our, our process of bhakti as it leads to love of God. But one thing they liked about us was our prashan. <laughs> and I say that with great emphasis because every time we would have a in upcoming huge conferences, which included everybody, they would they would commission us to cook. <laughs> so yeah, we, we we so we became popular because of the first time. <laughs> so they liked that. And one time we had a little contention that they found that we offer our our food to the Lord before we and so the, the Muslims and the Jews took issue with that because the Muslims and Jews don't worship deity you know, they're very much against the idea they think all forms of Lord are idol so uh, they told us that if you prepare food 
It should not be offered to any of the, as they said it, idols. <laughs> so um, we offered it at Prabhupada. <laughs> So that was a good move, Maharaj. <laughs> just to satisfy them. Because they were investigating us. <laughs> we became a little controversial. And in 2004, I was in Barcelona, Spain. And we had an interfaith conference there. And there were different panel discussions and representatives of different traditions. And some of our devotees entered there, but one of the things I remember clearly is on one panel discussion, there was a devotee from the Madhvacharya line, who was a Mudvite. And if you know Mudvites, they one of their, their main principles is to establish the worship of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the ultimate principle of worship. So they're very, they're very confrontational. So I was watching this one mug like smashing all of these other persons. <laughs> and the, these other guys, they were some different groups. And they were getting upset. Well, we're just, these are just friendly talks. We're just presenting our, and, and he didn't want to get into that. He just wanted to show that you guys are in Maya. <laughs> So I was enjoying that part. We didn't take part in it directly, but that's the nature of the mud, the mud bikes. They're very, uh, they want to establish that the Supreme Personality of God is, is a person. And they worship Krishna as Udabi Krishna, and, but mostly they worship Ram. So he was very voracious, vociferous, I use the word not voracious, vociferous, in presenting. Um, you know, his arguments. <laughs> and then one time there was Hindu night. We had Hindu night there. And um, all of the Hindu groups, so-called Hindu groups came together. And the Mayavadis were there in full force and they took over the stage. They immediately got up and conducted their Mayavadi pre presentation as the main principle. So I was there with Sri Damodar Goswami. And, you know, Sri Damodar Goswami is a perfect gentleman, but he's also fixed Krishna worship. And, uh, you know, I was, I was getting really angry listening to those Maya speak. <laughs> I was, you know, I was like, you know, I was just like spitting fire, you know. <laughs> I, just, I couldn't take it anymore. Maharaj was really cool and calm. Um, <laughs> finally, they let him speak. <laughs> they wouldn't have nothing to do with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they let him speak. And uh, he uh, picked one verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, uh, it's actually two verses together. Um, you can turn to that verse. I'll show it to you. It's first canto. Uh, second chapter, I think it's around verse 28, 1, 2, 28, somewhere around there. And he spoke on that verse very graciously and uh, right to the point. I think it's 1, 2, 28. Yeah, Vasudeva Paraveda, Vasudeva Paramaka, Vasudeva Parayoga, Vasudeva Parakriya, Vasudeva Param Gyanam. Vasudeva Param Tapa, Vasudeva Paro Dharma, Vasudeva Param Bhati. In the revealed scripture, the ultimate object of knowledge is Sri Krishna, the personality of God, in, the purpose of performing sacrifices to please him, yoga is for realizing him, all food of activities are the reward of his supreme knowledge, all austerities are performed to know him, religion is meant to, to, to love him, he is the supreme goal of life. So he spoke on that amidst all of these mind bodies. <laughs> he spoke so humbly and so graciously 
that I don't think they even got it. <laughs> they were just so they allowed him to speak. He spoke nicely on this verse, establishing Krishna as the Supreme Person in the Gavi. And then when it came to the next part of the program, where they were going to allow us to uh, come forward. So we came forward and we had we started doing kirtan. And as soon as we started kirtan, all of the Maya bodies left. <laughs> they, all, they all disappeared. <laughs> they think kirtan. Wow. Is, yeah, they got some kind of sentimental thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Marsh, why did they leave? They didn't they didn't appreciate or, or did they, they were against it or something? Ah, oh, they think you know, my body is just sitting there with you know with long faces speaking philosophy. That's all we do. Mm. <laughs> More like philosophy than philosophy. <laughs> That's a question, Prabhu. I didn't I, I don't have your name. I'm sorry, Prabhu, but please you can go ahead and ask a question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, do not Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you, dear Guru Deva, all glories to the assembly of devotees. Uh, you mentioned about prasadam. Uh, some time ago, I uh, saw one uh, video in social media where devotees are sharing prasadam uh, in Ukraine for hungry people. And this that video was made in such funny way, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Charlie Chaplin movies. Uh, quickly moving, uh, funny music. I found this video disrespectful for Prasadam and for people whom this Prasadam is sharing. Uh, maybe this is critical mood of mine. Uh, may we disres uh, maybe this uh, may we disrespect Prasadam at all. Well, I don't know anything about the video, so I can't really say anything. No, this was made in a funny way, you know, like Charlie Chaplin movies, uh, quickly moving, uh, uh, funny music. Uh. I'd have to see see what you're saying before I can understand. I don't want to say anything unless I know what I'm speaking about. Okay. Thank you. I can't really uh, say. No, maybe some general principles uh, you can share with us. Some general principles about sharing prasadam, about uh, respect for prasadam when we are sharing it. Oh, respect for people whom we are sharing it. Prasadam is Krishna. And prasadam is preaching also. Prasadam is showing Krishna's mercy. Yeah. Yeah, just like on Saturday, coming up, we're doing a walk here in London. It's a 10-mile walk, and it's uh, in order to raise money for one group of devotees who also went to the Ukraine. That was the devotees from London, headed by uh, Parasaram. And Parasaram feeds 5,000 people a day in London. And now the demand is up to 20,000. So we need to raise money in order to get him a bigger facility. So this is the purpose of the walk. So many devotees are coming out to support this, and we're also trying to get in the building. So, yeah, so all the devotees are supporting this whole program of Parasaram distribution. Uh, because it is one of the most important part of our uh, preaching. As Prabhupada said, uh, we should distribute prasadam within 10 miles radius of each and every temple. So, and then Prabhupada, when he, before he departed the planet, he mentioned many times that Harinam and Krishna prasadam is the two powerful weapons by which we can uh, change the hearts of the conditioned souls in this age. Yeah. So prashadam should not be minimized. Speaking of prashadam, I think I got to go. <laughs> I'm running out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj.
Thank you so much for this wonderful class. Thank you to all the devotees for joining us. Vancha Kravati Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Vevacha, Patita Nam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha Shila Prabhupada Ki, His Holiness Chandramali Swami Ki. Jai. Jai. Jai.